Hello. Hey, Sherwin. Oh, do you hear your intro? Like, it's right. Hey, is this Miss Sherwin? So you want to lower the guard there? Let's let's reset that call. You were calling. Hello. Hey, Sherwin. Hey. Hey, Sherwin. So intro is gonna change it. Uh, hey, is this Miss Sherwin? Hey, Sherwin. Like lower your. Become gentle. Mondo, you, mm -hmm. you, you had to work on that too, right? You I had to work so hard on that, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a little, yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard because, yeah, I, yeah, I need to work on that. Yeah, it, it's just. Well, but, but Peter, you want, you want like lower energy? Or because I know like where Ryan is all like, hey, Sharon. Like, it's just more, friends. yeah, it's gentle. Like, I don't hear a smile on your end of the phone. So, whatever I can feel like positive energy. Like, Ryan's like, hey, Miss Sharon. So he's really loud, right? But you can see, you can feel his warmth. Alfred is like, "Hey, what's going on, Mr. Jimmy?" Like, I like Mr. Alvin, but hey, like when when you're like, "Hey, Sharon," like it rather than like, "Hey, Miss Sharon." All I want you to do is add a smile to your to the first ten seconds. That's what I would do. Hey, Miss Sharon, and I'm telling you, it'll make a it'll make a huge difference for you. Try it, Christian. Just smile. Hello, who's this? Hey, Peter. Lower your volume. Hey. <laughs> Just, just keep the smile and just be normal. How would you say it? Hey, Peter. There you go. That's better. Yeah, just better. Just sound like a normal human, but smile. Like, you like your job. Like, hey, hey, Mr. Peter. I like to make the analogy. If you went to Starbucks and you go to 50 Starbucks, but you like this one Starbucks, the person at the front is like sweet. They smile. They're gentle. You ever just meet someone that does customer service and they're just good at their job and you don't hate them and they're just really nice? That's yeah. how you want to sound in the first 30 seconds. Like, how can I lower the guard? We're like, man, this is just a sweet guy. This is a really nice person. This guy, Kevin, sounds awesome. I, I, you know, even though I don't need anything, I'm probably gonna listen to him. That's what you wanna manufacture. Okay. Hello? Hey, Sherwin? Hey. Hey, Sherwin, this is, uh, this is Christian. I'm just getting back to you in regards um, to this request you sent in here on Facebook. Um, it shows here that you're listed your beneficiary as uh, your daughter. Is that correct? No, no, it's not. Oh, it's not. I have your date of birth here as July thirtieth, nineteen seventy. Hang up. Okay, gosh. Oh my God. There wasn't. She didn't know why you're calling. Might have been an issue. Um, not a good call to review there. No. Hey, Nolan. So you see how you're very blunt. Hey, Nolan. Mm -hmm. That's your tone. It's like you're. Hey, Nolan. It's like your favorite runs in. Hey, Nolan. Just smile. Hey, Nolan. Just light it up. Yeah, light it up. Try it real quick. Hey, Nolan. There you go. Lower your volume, but lighten it up. Keep. Hey, Nolan. There you go. Try it again. Hey, Mondo. Try it again. Hey, Mondo. It's like, yeah, hello. Can I give some, you know what I think about when I'm doing my intro? I think about almost like reading a kid. You know yeah. how, like, whenever you're, you go to see, like, a little kid, right? Like, hey, yeah. buddy, like, very welcoming, like, mm -hmm. you know, not, like, kind of scaring them, right? You're just gentle and light. You could be the biggest person ever, but for yeah. a kid, kid, it's like, oh, my God, man. Hey, man, what's up? You hey, know? that's what I think of. Yeah, I like that a lot. Hey, Miss Sherry. Try right. it, Christian. All right. <clears throat> hey, Mondo. A little too serious. That kid's running away from you. Yeah, that kid's running away from you. That kid doesn't know if you're his brother or not. All right, all right. Um, <clears throat> hey, hey, Mondo. Hey, Mondo. Yeah. Yeah, who's this? Hey, Mondo, I'm just getting back to in regards to this uh, request you sent in here on, on Facebook. Um, it, it shows that you elicit your beneficiary as, as Preston. There you go. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. I want you to listen from everyone else's calls too, but I want you to focus on that. Let's hear how you how you sounded with Nolan. Hello. Hey, Nolan. So you just, it's in every call. That's what you need to fix here. Yeah. Hey, Nolan. There's no smile like, in my face. Like, I'm looking, I'm thinking, I can see how you're, I can see what you look like on the side of the phone. Like, before, like, when you say your first words. I, if I didn't see Alfred and Alfred agreed me, you'd be like, oh, that's a nice guy. For you, I just feel like he, this guy's calling me because he has to call me. So just change that intro. Work on that intro. Hey, Mr. Nolan. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, no, I think we're or, texting back and forth here. This, this is Christian. Uh, I'm just getting back to you here in regards to this uh, request you sent in here on Facebook. Um, it shows here that you listed Sean Williams as your beneficiary. Is that correct? Uh, my phone is just gonna cut off. What was that about? My phone is cut off. I said my phone is just gonna cut off because I don't have that many minutes on it. I haven't, I haven't charged it up. Uh, but, um, yes, I will look at the insurance, but I won't be looking for it until the end of this month for the first. That's what I feel to pay you something on it. So I need insurance. Oh, okay, yeah. My job is, my job is not to get anything, uh, you know, for you to pay anything for today. My job is to just let you know if you can even get qualified. Um, then we can set up a date for you that, that it makes sense for you, okay? Okay, then we have to stop the You're kind of jumping right into it, which is cool. But I would be like, okay, yeah, no worries. Well, let me see how I can first help you here, uh, Nolan. Now, were you just looking to leave something behind for the family, or are you just trying to cover the barrel expenses? Kind of fill me in. So, the first, the goal, always, 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 is, is you want to see what they're trying to do first. So I would, uh, okay, no worries, gotcha here. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I'm not even sure how it can help you. So you sound like I'm gonna sell her. Like you, you sound like a salesman. A salesman would say something like that. Like, yeah, of course, I'm gonna take your money on the first. Let's go ahead and set up a call. And rather than saying, you know, I, you know, Miss Miss Nolan, I'm just here to help provide the best option and solution for you. You know, I'm not even sure how I can best help you. Kind of fill me in. What had you most motivated to start looking? Around? Like, what, what were you looking for? Something to cover the burial expenses or leave something behind? You see that? Mm -hmm. So. Christian, I can't, I can't talk right now. Like, you know, I want the life insurance. I can't say anything up to the first. Uh, my phone's about to die. What's your response? Yeah, Peter, my, my, my goal here today um, is to not get you to pay for anything right now, but really uh, to see if we can even get you qualified first here. Stop. Um, yeah, you just, I, we just, you just said that, and I wanted you to say something different. So change, change like this. Yeah, no worries. My job was just to see how I can best help you. I'm not even sure how I can help you here today. Kind of fill me in. Or are you looking to leave something behind for the family? Or are you trying to cover the burial expenses? Got it? Mm -hmm. Christian, um, you guys seeing that? Everyone else here? Cool, cool, cool. You don't want to jump in here. You're like, I'm not even sure how I can help you. What salesman's going to say that? Like, you're going to separate yourself because I'm not even sure how I can best help you. Let me see what your situation is first here. Miss Nolan, before I can even, you know, offer you a solution, okay? So kind of fill me in so I can best help you where you're looking to leave something for the family or cover the barrel expenses. Cool? You're going to go back right into it. You're right into it. Now you're right into the flow of the script. Give it a shot. All right, Peter. Well, um, I'm, I'm trying to see how I can even best help you here today uh, to see if we can even get you qualified here. Um, were you just trying to leave something, you know, behind for the family or were you just trying to cover... Those bear um, probably a little bit of both. I mean, I need the insurance, but I can't start until the first. Can't start until the first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And and you know, my job here is not to get you to pay for anything right now. Um, we first even have to see if you can get qualified. Um, to see how I can best help you here. Okay. Um, now to see how I can best help you here. Are you a smoker? Yeah. And then you move them in. Cool. Okay. Keep that in your toolbox, guys. We don't want to sound like salesmen. It's all about them and them, them, them. We use the word, if you just use the word best, I'm going to do my best for you as much as I can. Um, you're going to gain a lot of traction. Let's go through another call. What was the, do you remember the person that you had the, the longest call with? Was it in the morning? Oh, it was, it was under a Preston. It was a, it was a live transfer today, so. Okay, did I you? Think it would probably be under Preston. Okay, did you take that on the ringy or was it on the? It was on, it was You sound good, Preston. Just a quick little. Hey, Christian here. Um, pretty, I'm pretty sure you got no Preston here. Um, just so when it's a transfer here, or it's like, uh, feel free to be personable too. Like if she, hey, you know, how did, did Miss Miss Krista, Miss Crystal, like this is when you can build a little bit of rapport off of a transfer. It's good because it's kind of awkward. Hey, Miss, you know, Melissa, you know, how how's the week been treating you? You do you having a good? Good start to your new year. She's gonna say yes, and then you can kind of get back on the same page. It's kind of awkward when you transfer, like where to trans transition. So that would be a place, Kevin. Or we talked about yesterday. When's a good time to build rapport? Transfer is a great place to build rapport when it's awkward. Cool. Back to you. I uh, got your beneficiary down as uh, Ella Brooks. Right. Right. Okay. Just to confirm some information here again. Uh, date of birth: June thirtieth, nineteen fifty-two. Yes. Okay, and it shows here that you do have some coverage in place. 
Um, were you just looking to add on to, to what you currently have, or you know, you're trying to yeah. on, you're trying to add on or find something? Yeah, and you got that that seven thousand in coverage, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so how did you know she had seven thousand? Because Preston told you, right? Yeah. Okay. So you want to call, you want to act dumb that you don't know what they have. Okay, gotcha. So you're trying to add on and, you know, kind of fill me in here, Miss, you know, Miss Ella, how much coverage do, do, do you kind of have or how much coverage are you, do you currently have? Don't assume, just I, the whole goal, don't, don't forget, I had to say, one thing to never do is assume. Assume that this is what they want. Assume that this is what they have. Let them tell you. Just have that third grader knowledge of like, I'm not really sure what they have, but they're going to tell me. Cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. If, if we have a, a sixty thousand dollar mortgage, and I'm trying to get it way down to where if something did happen, that uh, my wife and daughter could stay in the house. That your wife and daughter could stay in the house. Okay. Good, Marine. Gotcha. And how much are they making you pay for that for that seven thousand dollars? A month? Uh, seventy eight months. For seven thousand for seventy eight months. Okay. All right. How old is this lady? Uh, I don't remember. Seven thousand for seventy eight dollars. She was in a two year wait. That was, so this one was a weird one. So the yeah. whole time I thought I was gonna be giving her another add-on policy, and then she turned around and said, "This is for my husband." So I had put everything in toolkits already for her. And but no, mm -hmm. no, no, it was for him. Thankfully, she like knew all his stuff. But okay, yeah. what what age was he? Just give me a give me a guesstimate real quick. I think it was 1963. Okay, so 1963. So this is what I'm doing. I'm putting in. I'm putting in toolkits immediately. When she says I have seven thousand, okay, I'm putting seven thousand, and he's 1963. I think. Okay, let's just give it a shot. Seven thousand for, let's say seven. No, I put seven. Oh, 1962. So just one year. Okay, so seven. Let's put seven thousand in here. Put 1962. Oh, okay. Gosh, gotcha. you get the seven thousand. Now you want information, and how much do they make? Seventy-eight dollars. You can see here these companies are gonna put her. If this person's healthy, is he a smoker? Uh, no. Okay. So worst case scenario, she's way overpaying and she's in a two-year waiting period. Oh my gosh, Miss. You know why are you paying so much? You're gonna ask how much coverage do you have? Okay. Who are you with? You you want to get the company name who they're with and ask about that waiting period. Cool. Mm -hmm. This is a juicy deal right here. This is. This is money. Yeah, you can see she's paying seventy four. You can see these rates here for thirty nine, forty bucks at multiple different companies. I am salivating in my mouth as a salesman. This is a <laughs> so we're gonna teach you here how to kind of go through this uh, and, and see what happened. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Peter, what does the living legacy preferred mean for SPI? Uh, that's that the level. Th that's the level. There's that, and they have the standard, which is like the COPD rate. Okay. So the. Both are good. Uh, preferred is like the best rates. Great, great, low, low price. Yep. Okay, cool. Just uh, cool. Yep. And with this lady, she she said she wanted twenty thousand minimum for her husband. Um, uh, for that's what she told me, and then yeah, well, we listen to the call. Okay. Wait, wait, two year wait period. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What did they tell you when they told you about that two year wait period? Oh my gosh, and you got stuck in one of those two year waiting periods. Is, do you have cancer or something? Why did they why did they put you in one of those waiting periods, Miss Miss Sharon? So when someone brings up they have a two year waiting period, oh my gosh, do you happen to have cancer? No, I don't. Well, oh my god, why did they do that? why did they put you in a waiting I don't know, that's all they told me. Okay, well I'm gonna Oh my gosh, they just put you in, so you're trying to see maybe you can find something cheaper and get out of a two year waiting period. You know, would that be helpful for you? Yeah, I am. Okay, well I'm gonna do my best here. This makes no sense. Any heart attack, and you're right in the medical. Any heart attack, strokes, cancers, diabetes, things like that. Cool? Uh, and by chance, who are you with? Good. Uh, Prudential. Who? Prudential. Prudential? Mm hmm Okay. Okay, so um, I just want to tell you kind of how we work here, okay? Um, we work specifically only with those who have these, find the most affordable and reduced rate here, okay? That's okay, Prudential. Okay, you're going to explain how we work. Let's go into your discovery. When you went to the discovery, what was her health? What was the health like? Um, this in the... In, before the discovery a little bit or kind of in is when 
is when she revealed that she's looking for her husband, not for herself. Mm. I think I did ask in there um, before the discovery. Um, I did ask, you know, if she would want to get something on herself. Because I was like, this is this is who we work with. Uh, but then she said, no, um, I'm not going to qualify for anything. So I kind of did dig there. I, I should have. Yeah. I, I should have asked if she had current cancer or anything. Um, but it kind of threw me off there when she... Uh, Brought him into the play. Her husband. Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, Lippy? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. You, so you really just wanted to, to make sure that your wife and daughter don't really have to kind of worry about, you know, maybe any of your expenses or, you know, that mortgage too, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I would. That would not. That would not be a good situation. But uh, before we jump into this here, um, it's just really important for Arkansas. It does require that I sh- um, kind of fill me in, you know, that uh, you know, covering the mortgage here. Um, for your wife. Okay, kind of fill me in. Question number one when someone has coverage is kind of fill me in. Since you already have that 7,000 coverage in place, what had you looking around for some more life insurance? So, Kevin, it's what we trained on this morning, Kevin and Alfred. Since you already have that 7,000, I guess, what had you, you know, looking around for some, some more life insurance? Try that question, Christian. Okay, okay, Peter. So, so, so back to you here. Um, kind of fill me in. Um, you know, you have that 7,000 of coverage in place you know what what, what had your motivators to look around for for some more life insurance yeah be more curious and it sounded more natural okay and christian you know you, you mentioned that you already have that seven thousand through prudential what had you what had you looking for you know looking around for some some more oh okay peter so so kind of back to you here kind of fill me in um you have that that seven thousand in place through through prudential um Fill me in here. What what really had you motivated to to start looking around for for some more life insurance? There you go. That's better. My daughter, is that really what you had had you motivated to start looking around for that life insurance? See how you're giving her the you're giving her the answers. You want to ask you want to act like you don't know the answers. So is that what had you looking around for more for your daughters? She's gonna say yes. You don't want yes answers. You want long worded answers. You want okay. Well, had you motivated to start looking around? Question mark. It's a very open ended question. You're giving yourself, you're cutting yourself short here. You're not allowing yourself to build any, any type of value. Okay. Yeah. See, she, see, I got a yes there rather than, oh, well, you know, I have the 7,000 now and I was just concerned that I'm overpaying for it. You didn't give her any room to give you a good answer. Does that make sense? You want to ask yeah. a question, a, a, a true question, not a statement where they say yes. Mondo, so, we struggled with that with the longest time. Like you have, you're just a professional question asker. You just ask the question. Mm-hmm. You don't say anything. They say they say something to you back. You repeat what they say back to you, and you ask another question. They answer the question. You basically repeat back to them which what they said to you, and then you ask another question. Is that about right? Okay. So you know, like even if like they they tell you their main concerns like in the beginning, like she did with the mortgage, and just want to she wants something in place. Should I just act again. like I don't know and just hit it again with like that question? Yeah, exactly. Okay, because like I want to best understand how I can serve it. I know we touched on this earlier, but what had you motivated since you already have coverage now to start looking around for some more? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you really, you really just wanted to kind of. You see how you're saying you're really like you're not asking questions. You're you're giving your statement. She's gonna say yes here. So let's say she says, um, you know, I want to make sure that I have enough coverage to pay for my mortgage. What's your next question? She answers that. What had you looking for more? You say, uh, she says, I want to make sure I have enough to cover my full mortgage or, you know, make sure everything's taken care of my $60,000 mortgage. What, what's your next question? For her saying, hey, she wants to take care of that mortgage and stuff. Yeah. What's the next question? Yeah, so and, and kind of fill me in here when you say that you know you want your 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 daughter to be taken care of in in, in that mortgage, you know, um, what what do you mean by that? Yeah, I just want to have everything paid off so that if I pass away, that my husband can keep the house with my daughter. Yeah, so you want everything paid off, and you want your daughter to keep the house, um, you know. And why would that be important to you? Because I don't want to leave this burden onto them. Yeah, okay. So you don't want to leave that burden on to them um, and have that mortgage there and you want things kind of in place. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Okay. And 
Now for me here, Peter, since you don't have any coverage in place, I guess, what are you most concerned about? You, you, that's a wrong question there. Since you no. already do have that, so what are you most oh, concerned yeah. about? Yeah. Cool. And, and Peter, kind of for me here, you mentioned, you know, you do have that coverage in place, I guess. So, so kind of fill me in. Um, what do you say, you know, you're most concerned about? Yeah, let's see what she says here. Uh, make sure that your wife and daughter are covered with that mortgage and any other bare expenses that, uh, that might incur, is that correct? So she's supposed to tell you that, not you tell her that. You see, you okay. see the difference here, Mondo? See how much he's talking and then she's talking? It needs to be reversed. You need to, she's just sitting there like this. Yes. Yep. Well, yeah, That's about right. Rather than you're supposed to do that, like you're supposed to ask a question and she's supposed to spill the beans. So I want you to just really focus on like cutting the fat and asking one good question, being quiet, repeating back to her what she says, and then mm -hmm. asking another good question. Okay. Mondo, any advice you'd give for him? I think he's on a call. Oh, he is. He's like, screw this training, I'm going to sell. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, you know. No, what, what was that? I, 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 Okay, so you're looking to get coverage on Kenneth. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. So, but are you wanting to get more coverage on yourself as well? No, I, I won't tell us that, honey. Are you? Uh, okay, gotcha. I've been married in 39 years. 39 years? Mm hmm. Oh my gosh, that is a long time. Well, congratulations for being married that long. I've only been married for four years. Remember what I talked about yesterday? Yeah, don't talk about They don't people. care about us. And I'm not trying to be hard on you, Christian, but I, I, this is what what no. it takes to become yeah. successful here. Like, I kind of I kind of I kind of realized that after uh -huh. I said a little bit. Yeah, it's I good. Get it back on track. After I said that, I was like, okay, got it, got to get back on track. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time. What was that? Yeah, we got a seven-year-old dollar. And a seven-year-old daughter? She's pretty old for a seven-year-old daughter. Yeah. Back on track. All right. Well, gotcha, I guess, if, you know, if you didn't have any, you know, kids didn't have any coverage in place. You know, who, who See how you didn't ask the right question there? What question, what question should I have asked? Well, does he, he doesn't have, you, you basically told her, well, if Kenneth doesn't have any coverage in place, um, mm -hmm. You know, what would you be most concerned? He sounds like she has a seven thousand dollar policy, so you want to verify that. And does Kevin does Kevin have that seven thousand dollar policy, or do you have that seven thousand? Does Kevin have life insurance? You don't want to assume that he doesn't have life insurance. Okay. Okay. So let's say she says he does. Oh, okay. So he has a seven thousand, right? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. So, you know, since you already have that seven thousand in place, what would you say that you're most concerned about? Like you're back on track. Cause that's the reason you gotta figure out why she needs life insurance. Like, what is her problem? She already has something. Why is that not enough? Like, what's going on here? How can you help her? So also too, don't like say definitely. Oh yeah, this is important, isn't it? Like, those are like, oh man, okay, it would hurt. When you say it would hurt, like, you know, kind of fill me in, what does that look like? So you don't want to like, try to like, if someone has a pimple, it's like almost like, for me, I see, a, a, I'm visualizing like they have a pimple and I'm gonna like, I'm gonna like make it like red, like it's red, like, oh my gosh, you have this pimple on your face. Do you see it? It's right there, it's the pimple. And rather than saying, oh wow, and like, you know, how's that make you feel knowing that that's kind of there? Like, did you want, so just take that like softer approach, not like being so direct. Okay, gotcha. So, wow, it sounds like it'd be hard for you. It'd be difficult. And when you say it's going to be difficult, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Rather than like kind of like helping her, like you're trying to put a magnifying glass on the problem. She probably already knows she has a problem. She's not, it's it just, that, that statement there like brings the guard up rather than lowering the guard down. Okay. So, 
Yeah, I, let's say I say I'm the one. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I would be the one having to pay for everything. What would you say? Okay, and you know, you 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 would be the one paying for everything. You know, and you know, I would never start that. And you you would be the one paying for everything here, uh, Peter. Uh, would you be in a position where you could come out of pocket for that ten to fifteen thousand dollars for your for the burial expenses? Oh no way! I'm. It'd be so hard. It would be so hard. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what would that kind of look like? Good. Good. Yeah. You know I don't I don't know. I'm not in the position to. Exactly. You don't want to like. Perfect. Like what we just trained on there. Don't don't stress. Like oh my gosh, yeah, it'd be really hard. Do exactly like that. Like oh my gosh, like you're there from. What would that look like? Do you yeah. see that there, Christian? That was good. Yeah. I'm not thinking through those pockets. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I think it sounds like here that you know as a wife that you're really just looking out for you know you're looking out for. There's no really clear pain here because you don't really I know. Don't. It just, you didn't ask good questions to get the pain. So that's probably why you lost it there because she doesn't really need to get extra policy. There's not much value being built. It's just all kind of just, you know, I don't think the ball's in your court right now. Um, and I think that's very honorable. I think that's what you should do in a marriage. Is look out for one another. See, I don't recommend that you say that's what you should do is get, yeah, you know, you should speak to a, a random person on the phone and buy life insurance today. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing, I'm hearing very salesy rather than like, Wow, like that is, you know, you must really love your husband. You guys have been together for 39 years, and it sounds to me that you just want to make sure that he's taken care of, that he sacrificed a lot of his life for you, and you want to make sure that, you know, if something happens to him, that you're taken care of, and then ultimately that your family is always in a good position. Is that right? So you, yeah. want to, you want to take that soft approach. You don't want to sound salesy. Kind of like what you did earlier, saying like, yeah, you need this, right? Same thing here. It's like, wow, it's honorable that you would buy something like this. I want you to remove that sales pressure. Okay. So that's the report. And you know, trying to, trying to get trying to get him covered today, um, and trying to make sure that he's got something in place that he passes. Um, that it sounds like this is something that's really important to you, and, and you know, you really see the value in, in having it for him. Is that all right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Now it sounds like this is pretty important to you. Um, is this something you've been looking around for him for for Candace for a while now, or is it is this something you realize you kind of need? Uh, I've been looking around some. Been looking around for him. Okay. And you know. Have, have you just not been able to find, you know, anything affordable for Kenneth and, and come back to it? Yes. Yes? Okay. And, and uh, what have they been telling you? Like when you've been looking around? For $30,000 and $100 a month and more. $30,000 and $100. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Gee. Well. I'm glad, you came. I'm glad you picked up the phone today. Um, same thing here. This is the same instance of you. I'm glad you picked up the phone. I'm glad you sold me. Same thing I was talking about. Like, yeah, you definitely need this. You see that same cadence there? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Remove that. Well, I'm gonna do my best here for you. Just when you when you when you feel that per like you just don't want to sound salesy, and I just feel it's very salesy. So just remove those sales words. Those like just exactly like that. Well, I'm glad you pick up the phone. You know, I'm glad that we're speaking here today. Well, I'm gonna do my best here for you. But ultimately, you want to say what's in the script. You know, it sounds like you do value having some additional life insurance. You just need to make sure you can find something that's you know comfortable and affordable for you. Because my job here is really just to see you know which what really Kenneth would be eligible for here. Okay, and like I said, we were specific. Why are we going back to the, why are we going back? Stick to the script there. Okay, gotcha. So my job is to help you find something that's comfortable and affordable for you here today. Um, and, and a bunch of other medical conditions too, trying to get that day one covered, okay? So it really does sound like here that you, you know, you really do value having There you go. That's all you need right there, Christian. All I need. That's all you need right there. Okay, gotcha. So, what we, you know, it sounds like you really do value just right there on the script. It's a simple script. You don't need to add takeaway right now when you're just getting started. Just keep it simple. Stick to that script. Your husband, okay. Just want to make sure that you can find something that's you know, comfortable, nice, and affordable for you. Is that about right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, Ella, I'm gonna do my best for you here. Okay. I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna try to the best of my ability to see uh, what I can get Kenneth here eligible for. Okay. And I want to let you know that I'm always gonna be here uh, for you, especially as his wife. Um, if he passes. Um, you're gonna be that beneficiary on file, okay? So I got That's good though. Like I feel your heart here, which is good. That's gonna make you a really good agent. Okay. I'm, I'm in this with you, okay? Mm -hmm. right. Love yeah. that I'm in this with you. I'm on your team. Like I love that. Keep using that. Like it's, it feels like you're you got her your best interest at heart, which is awesome. Good stuff. Uh, with Candace planning for that more formal burial, or are you gonna go to that cremation round? Not me. 
So structure your words like this. Now with Kenneth, are you guys planning for more of that formal burial or are you kind of going that cremation route? So I like to do this. Are you guys going that cream? Are you planning for more formal burial or are you going to go that cremation route? Like that's how I think about those words. Like this okay. or that. This or that tonality. Kind of like, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Try that. Give it back to me. This words. All right. <clears throat> now, Peter, are you... Are you planning for uh, for that more formal burial, or are you gonna go to that uh, cremation route? Exactly. Good. I'm gonna go uh, to that burial route. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. And if Ted is there, I just want to yeah. make sure he's there. Okay. Just to confirm, so that way when we get. You good. Know, I'm glad that you confirmed he's there. You can do apps with people if they're not there. So good. He's watching that smile. He's watching that smoke. Oh, nice, nice, man. My face, nice. I like that. <laughs> gotcha. So happy about that fifteen, you know, maybe twenty thousand dollars. You know, cover all the various expenses now to the future. And, you know, leave a little something behind to, to you and to your daughter. Um, that, that's what you're looking for, correct? Right? At least 20. At least. Yeah, because remember she said she wanted 60? So that wouldn't make sense when, you, when you're telling her that. She, she wants to cover her mortgage. So having just 10 to 15 to cover your barrel, that's not going to solve her problem. We're here to solve problems rather than this, you know. This is when that script changes a bit. You have to think on your toes a bit. You see how that doesn't make sense? Yeah. Which is okay, which is good. But you just got to make sure you can hear them out and understand, um, understand what their situation is. So if she was looking for like that, like sixty thousand to like cover the mortgage, um, you know. But she said, "This is uh, what Brent, what Brandy told me earlier was if she was if she was looking around for something for thirty thousand for a hundred, um, and she told you um, that she was gonna because at the end of the call she hung up and said I'm gonna look around for something else. When I pitched her the twenty thousand, for it was like a hundred and eleven per month. It was too expensive, yeah. Um, so in this kind of situation where she's looking for like like sixty thousand, mm -hmm. how would I go how about that, that if she you know really can't afford it? You gotta set expectations. Well, there's two options here for you. You know, I just want to make sure this is what you're looking for. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Now, are you looking for something like the whole life where the cost won't change? It's gonna be there for you, or are you looking for something like? Like that's going to be give you that $50,000 but it's going to expire after five to seven years and it's going to be cheap at first, but then it cancel on you. Like what were you really looking for? Okay. Uh, one something that's always going to be there. Okay. Gotcha. So with whole life insurance, it's going to be a bit more expensive. I'm going to be upfront and honest with you here, Christian. It's, you know, it's going to be not as much coverage as you probably need, but then it's, it's going to be an option that's always going to be there for you. The cost will never change. It'll be there for you forever and it's never going to change price. Okay. But again, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than term, but you told me that you don't want anything to expire, correct? Okay. So it's gotta reset reset expectations there. Okay. Same thing if someone who's really unhealthy is gonna run into this, where someone's like, you know, they have cancer or they have all these jacked up health conditions and they're trying to get dead. I don't want anything with a two year waiting period, Christian. Okay, well, Mr. Mr. Christian, can I be honest with you here? You know, can I be like, do you want me to be like every other agent or can I be an honest agent? Which one do you want? Uh, 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 be, can you be honest with me? Okay, with your kidney you know, dialysis and your current cancer, there is no company here that is going to give you a day one coverage. So um, I'm just here to shoot you straight. This is the only company that will give you that best rate for that, that you know, that two year waiting period. But no company, I don't care who you talk to, is going to give you that day one coverage. Okay, so just mm -hmm. setting those expectations allows those, the kills those objections before they come up. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Keeper is texting me here. Okay. 20. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell, tell, you, tell you right now, it's, it's looking pretty good here. Um, um, and other than the uh, bear expenses, are there any other like large bills or debts you're worried about leaving behind? Just the house. Just the house? So I just want to make sure that, that we're on the same page here. Okay. Um, it sounds like as a, as a mother and a wife, um, you know, they can just want to make sure that if something happens to we Kenneth, you know, that you know, if Kenneth, you know, God forbid, passed away, that you're in good hands, and that as a wife, that you're taken care of, and you got your daughter too. So um, I think that's super important here. You know, I don't think you want to be left taking up those pieces. You know, but okay, is uh, is Amanda's on the call? I think right there for you, that the only thing that you missed is you missed setting expectations, and you just didn't take the right angle. Yeah. Um, okay. But I hope this call kind of share with you a little bit like what you need now, because there's no, there's no, you didn't solve a problem, Christian. See, see, that's the thing. You don't really know what the issue is with this, with the like. You don't know her full. You don't know what she's actually trying to do. She's trying to have the mortgage. So when you picture ten thousand or twelve, it doesn't make sense. 
So yeah. the goal is to say figure out what their problem is and until you get what their real problem is, you gotta figure out how you can provide life insurance to actually solve that problem. Yeah. So okay. even if it was, if you, if you would've gave her 40, like let's say you gave her 20,000, it was $1, I bet she wouldn't have done it. Because it yeah. doesn't solve her problem. And she doesn't really know how big her problem is because she doesn't know what that looks like if she doesn't get an additional policy. Yeah. You know, who's gonna go into pocket? You know, I know that in even asking her like, well, you have 7,000, would a little bit of extra coverage, you know, be better than having nothing, like just having what you currently have? She's gonna say yes. You know, what would that do for you, knowing that you could have an additional policy even though it's not as much as you want? How would that help you? Oh, it would help me tremendously. So you think Christian having an extra, extra policy is better than having this to 7,000, is that right? She's gonna say yes. And that's how you create value on the second policy. Okay. So, um, does that help you a bit? No, it really does. Yeah. yeah, I love I love these picking apart my calls because, you know, I feel like like I'm on the calls and I feel like I'm doing good, but mm -hmm. then I I always know that I can always work on something and I need to get better so that way. Yeah, I can sell more deals. But you know, breaking these things down the past, you know, since you know this past two days, it's yeah, it's been giving me some good insights on how I sound mm -hmm. and how you can pick apart my, my call so that way I can sound better. Yeah, I want you to do this. On your next call that you lose, every day I want you to bring in, number one, three things. Did you find three things? Did you, number one, find out what they were looking for? So write this down. Okay. So if you lost the call, I want you to listen back to the call and you wanna ask yourself these three things. Okay, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. So number one, did you clearly identify what they were looking for? So if you, if you lost a call, you, you know, why did I lose that call? Did you somehow clearly identify what they are looking for? Was it like, you know, they were looking for um, 15,000 to cover their barrel expenses. They were looking for life insurance because they wanted to leave something extra behind. They wanted to, um, you know, cover X, Y, and Z. Did you clearly identify what that is? Okay. Okay. Secondly, did you like, did you clearly understand what their pain was? Did you see what it would be if they didn't buy the life, life insurance? Okay, was there clear pain? Did you let them know, like, did they, did they realize how big a problem it is if they don't get this taken care of, okay? For example, in this call, there was no clear pain. She didn't really know, there's no consequences if she didn't buy. So, number one, clearly understand what she's looking for, why, second is clear pain, and then uh, third is, did you ask for a sale? Which is, just, did I actually pitch someone? Like, did I go through and not get hung up on? Did I pitch the sale? And then fourth is, how was my, sorry, my fourth thing is, is how do I handle the objection? If there's objections, how do I handle them? If you can do all those three things, the four things, sorry, you can, you can sell everyone, basically. So, clear why, what are they looking for? Clear pain, Consequences they don't buy. Third is, did you ask for the sale? Because a lot of times people get too afraid to ask. Do you at least go pitch them an option? And then fourth is, if there was objections, did you handle them? Cool. Yep. And let's hear how you let's hear how you did handle those objections. See how you're pitching barrel expenses? It doesn't even make sense. Like, she doesn't yeah. want barrel insurance. She wants. She wants something extra. Technically, it's it's whole life, and she in this case, it's whole. She wants whole life insurance to leave behind her family. So you want something that's going to be there for you. The twenty thousand. What this what this is going to do? Pitch it like this. So for example, if I'm pitching this lady at ten thousand, Christian, this ten thousand. What this is going to do? That you're going to have ten thousand plus the seven thousand. So you're going to have seventeen thousand dollars total. Okay, Christian. This is going to be you know. You know, enough to cover the barrel expenses, 7,000 is gonna go to the barrel expenses if you're going the cremation route. And then what this additional 10,000 is gonna do is that's gonna to go towards the mortgage. It's gonna you know, really cut off about, you know, you know, at least $10,000 of that mortgage and make sure that your family's taken care of and that you can kind of get back on your feet and make probably, you know, a good six to eight months of mortgage payments after going through one of the hardest days of your life, okay? That's what that 10,000 is gonna do. Now the next option is the 15,000. This is the most common option. You're gonna have the 15, plus the seven, that's $22,000. I like to add them together if they have existing coverage. What that $22,000 is gonna do is gonna cover all your you know, burial expenses, and then it's gonna leave you know, about you know, 15,000 or so left over to cover those mortgage payments. That'll typically cover probably about a year of your mortgage so they can live a year after mourning your husband and going through all these tough times. You see how it's related to the mortgage, not the burial? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. how you do it. And then the last option is the max option. This is the $30,000 option. It's probably more than you. I don't know if you recommend it. Got to make sure it's comfortable. $30,000 go to the mortgage. That's half of your mortgage here, Christian. So you mentioned how you want that taken care of. It's going to cover half of that. So then, you know, you have at least two to four years to live. 
in your house still, you don't have to worry about getting evicted, and you can make sure that your family's taken care of. This 30,000 is gonna be X, Y, Z. Okay. See that? So you just pitched it wrong. So if they're, if they're, if they're like asking for like more than like 35, if they're asking for like 40,000, 50,000, um, you know, like right off the bat, how would, uh, how would I go about handling that like at the beginning? Let's say, you yeah. know, I'm going through asking the questions, are you looking to cover that more former burial? Or, and then they say, yeah, I'm looking for like mm -hmm. 40 to 50,000. Yeah, you know? perfect. Yeah, no worries. Well, let me go ahead and see what I can do. And for that 40, 50,000, that more of the burial that you're worried about, or is it there's, you know, what you just want to leave a little gift behind. What are you looking for? Uh, just, you know, kind of cover those burials. Okay, gotcha. So you just want to make sure you have something to cover the barrel and then leave money behind. And then eventually they're going to, you just set expectations and you just pitch them. Oh, so you just want to have a little something to cover your barrel expenses and you just pitch them a 10, a 15 and a 20. You just reset their expectations. Most people don't know what they're looking for. They just have this idea. Oh, I, I want a hundred thousand dollars or I want 50,000. They have no idea what it's going to cost, what it's going to do for their family. And, um, you just have to set these expectations for them. Yeah. So if I, yeah, that's what I didn't do. So if I set expectations with this lady, you know, she probably wouldn't have hung up the phone on me if I set the expectations right. Yeah. She was you know, looking for like 6,000 and, but she was telling me they're quoting her 30,000 for a hundred. I, you know, I didn't put two and two together there. Yeah. She, there's no need for her to stay on the phone with you. So Christian, I want you to do this. The reason that you, you you know, identify those four reasons why you didn't make a sale every time so they can bring some to me, you can review them and listen to your calls. And then I want you to focus on this moving forward. Um, last, yesterday we focused on making sure that you're not giving them, like telling you about your life. I want you to remove, I want you to remove those statements where you sound salesy. Oh, yeah, you definitely like want, them. yeah, you definitely want the whole life insurance. I totally, okay. you know, who doesn't want life insurance? Those statements are not good. Cut those out and then we'll focus on um, some other things as well tomorrow. So we'll get 1% okay. better. All right. Hey, cool. uh, Peter, in this case, when she's like, I want 60000 or 40000 whatever, mm -hmm. as we're setting the expectations, can we dig in with that price? Be like, oh, 40000 okay, you must have a reason for that for that number. Yeah. How did you come up with that number? Yeah, what what specifically, when you say 60000 you know, what do you want the 60000 to do? Exactly. Well, I want to I wanna cover my burial expenses. There's, then there's your way in. Oh, so you want something to cover just to cover your barrel expenses? And okay, I got you. So even if you didn't get sixty thousand, your biggest concern is the having those barrel expenses taken care of. Is that right, Kevin? Mm, yeah. Now you switched it from sixty to burial, right there. Cool, cool.